Hello and welcome to Edison TV. I'm Dan Ridsdale and today I'm in Sydney, Australia, and I'm talking to Matt Barry, founder and chief executive officer of Freelancer. Freelancer run the world's largest crowdsourcing marketplace and are listed on the ASX. Today we're talking specifically about agentic AI. Matt, many thanks for hosting me today. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to talk specifically about agentic AI. Uh, can we start with the basics and, and, and can you explain exactly what it is and how it differs from, you know, traditional traditional AI or the or the assistance that we have on our AI platforms? Sure. It's a harnessing AI to basically fill out um, effectively workflows that humans would normally do. So that might be answering a phone call uh, and doing customer support and um, ideally repetitive workflows. And I know every business in the world has these repetitive workflows mm -hmm. and effectively using AI to um, automate that and do it in a very personalized way, a hyper-realistic way, uh, 24 by 7, uh, any language, um, uh, with a with a level of empathy and a level level of um, depth to the conversations and and the workflows that um, no human could really practically achieve when they're on KPIs of a certain number of tickets and phone calls to do per day. And um, certainly, we're, we're we're starting to deploy it on our platform, and we're seeing some pretty amazing results. Interesting. And how profound, how transformative is this technology? And and where specifically do you expect it to bring uh, significant change and, uh, and even, you know, future sticks that we dress in deep? Well, there's, there's a lot of hype in the space. So you kind of have to get, you know, away from the hype and into kind of where the practicality is. So I was very specific when I said earlier, looking at um, workflows. And um, so far from, you know, the, you know, you know, the Sam Altman uh, cry that, you know, 40% of the world's people are going to be unemployed because AI will take their jobs. That's not where we're looking. Where we're looking specifically are those mundane, repetitive, repeatable workflow jobs uh, where effectively it's the next generation of, of, of automation where, you know, and, and I think really the, the, the starting point where you're going to see this at, at, at scale is um, doing customer support and um, some parts of the sales process, you know, lead generation and, um, and so forth. Um, we're also starting to see it apply uh, in things like happy calls. So, for example, someone, does, um, someone needs to um, come out and repair a bit of equipment. Um, uh, you then have to follow up to see whether the service was, was, was adequate or not, do a custom, short customer survey. And even booking the time for the servicemen to go out in the first place, but you know that that's where practically I, I see it um, will will go, and, and it will it will be deployed at scale. So every business in the world, uh, small businesses, large businesses, you name it, is probably in the next two to three years going to have uh, their phones answered by AI, who will you know do customer support any time of day, any language, um, take orders, uh, process cards, process bookings, um, yeah, uh, yeah, put something in a calendar and so forth. And um, the pretty amazing thing is it's very, very accessible. Fascinating. And then just digging into what freelancers do specifically with Agentic AI, how are you integrating this into your, into your platform? Um, well, there's, well there's, there's, there's two really parts to that question. The first is that we are the we are the site that you go to to get AI deployed for your business. So just like you come to freelancer.com to get a website built, or you come to freelancer.com to get an app built, you now come to get your AI development done. So web development, app development, AI development, freelancer.com is the place. There's 80 million people on the site who can get all that built for you for any budget, you know, whether you're small business, large enterprise, replacing a call center, you, you name it. The second thing is we are deploying on our site. So we, so we do have it live currently. We have uh, Agentic AI uh, across various different modalities. So what I mean by that is we have it in live chat. So text-based chat, uh, doing customer support, uh, doing sales, doing operational support, administrative functions, et cetera. We also have it uh, uh, doing voice so doing outbound calls, uh, receiving inbound calls, and we have in 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 alpha uh, doing streaming video. And and in the future, in the next few years, you'll start seeing some pretty amazing demos of real time, um, high high quality video conferencing where you'll have AI doing those functions. And freelancer, you're really at the intersection of automation and and, and I guess the freelance economy. And you've talked previously about how AI is going to enable your freelancers to move up the stack. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see this playing out in terms of um, the freelance economy and, 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 and how that evolves for your freelancers? Well, it's a phenomenal tailwind because right now all the skills in the marketplace are going up quite dramatically. So if you were an average copywriter previously as a freelancer, now using GPT and Claude and the other various tooling out there, you can be an exceptional copywriter. If you were an average illustrator, 
before. Now, with the assistance of Mid Journey and you know, Nano Banana and the like, uh, you can now be an exceptional illustrator or at Photoshop or, or you know, other areas of graphic design. This is starting to happen in programming. It will happen in all uh, white collar uh, job areas. So whether it's interior design, architecture, you know, civil construction, you know, schematic layout of, of electronic circuits, you name it. So effectively what it's doing is it's really lifting the skills across the board of all the freelancers. And it's, I, I think it's akin to, you know, uh, 30 or 40 years ago, uh, you might come to work in the morning and there was no computer on your desk. And then all of a sudden you come to work in the morning and there is a computer at your desk, right? So obviously your productivity goes up dramatically. Um, there, are, you know, there is some dislocation, there is some change in job functions, but overall now, uh, if you think about the explosion of the internet and the explosion of computing, there are so many more jobs out there in the world now than there ever were before, but your ability to deliver work with using a computer, just like it is with AI, is now you know, many fold up in terms of productivity, in terms of output, in terms of value for money. And where is this heading in the long term, do you think? Do you, do you think that uh, the agents will eventually replace what freelancers are doing or, or multiply what they do? No, I, I, I think like all technologies, it, cre- it just creates m- more work. Uh, that's certainly what we're seeing at freelancers. So with our own internal deployment now, um, you know, our entire customer support team, we've said to them about a year ago, uh, you know, 12 months from now, you won't, you probably won't be doing tier one support. You'll be doing tier two support and tier three when, you know, things get complex or tricky with, with customers. But the initial reach outs and the initial um, support uh, uh, is done by AI. And in fact, what we found in our support organization now is that our traditional CX specialists are now becoming managers of the AI. They're spending a lot of their time curating um, the transcripts and modifying effectively the prompts, which are the workflows for the agents, because uh, businesses change over time, and so does the macro environment. So you have to constantly tweak and tune, just like your website content needs to be constantly updated, you know, or your app needs to be constantly updated. Your AI uh, also needs to be constantly updated, and that's, that's very, very dynamic. So our support team uh, basically become managers. They become higher skilled. They're now deploying agents we could never deploy before. So, for example, it would never be economically viable for us with 25,000 new signups a day to have a, um, an induction specialist for a freelancer. So, hi, Mohammed. You're, I see you've joined from all of Pakistan. You're a web developer. I've looked through your uh, portfolio. You've got some great things in there, but in your description, you say that you've got Flutter experience. I don't really see any examples. Why don't you upload something to your portfolio? Uh, by the way, I've seen a few uh, spelling mistakes in your description. You should fix that up. And would you like me to walk around the site with you and explain how everything works? That would never be economically viable for us, but now you can deploy these agents um, and, and, and run them for, for almost next to nothing or free, um, or in the case of voice, a few cents per minute. Uh, and uh, that would never be possible previously. So we're actually creating um, more activity on, on the platform as a result of this across not just support, but also operations and sales and so forth. Uh, in addition, when um, the AI is very good at escalating things to a human, so just like you might call someone up at a call center and they go, okay, let me put you through to a manager or a specialist in that particular area, um, the AI passes off to the humans who are doing um, now tier two support and they're dealing with more complex situations and so forth. But because the AI is so pro- uh, productive, what we're actually finding now is there are so many more escalations happening to humans as ever before because we're providing much more effective customer service. So we've actually created more work for the general support team than, than, than less work, so, which, which, is, which is great all around because you know, customers are obviously more engaged with our business. So, and on top of that, we have an engineering team doing the AI development and this, that, the other. So it's actually created a lot more work for us uh, than, 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 it, than it's actually taken away. And how accessible is this technology? And, and specifically, if, if you're to help somebody implement an agent, what, what do you actually need to do? It's actually very, very simple. Um, so as I said before, I, I mean, there's been a couple of different ways of technology that have come through that have transformed business. So yeah, 1994, 1995, the internet went mainstream. Um, I'm old enough to remember those years. I don't know if you can remember those years. Yeah. You know, it was literally 1994. It was the geeks had email addresses. 1995, your grandmother had an email address. Everyone online and businesses uh, wanted to reach customers through the internet. So they built, did web development and they built websites and so forth. And today, a website can be quite simple or it could be very, very complex. It really depends what you, what you want it to do. Um, but that led to a huge boom in that web development industry. Um, then the smartphone revolution came along and you had iPhones and you had uh, Android and then uh, businesses realized they want to reach customers on the go and so it led to a boom in app development and again you come to freelancers to get that done and that can range from a few hundred dollars to thousands of dollars plus depending on, on how complex uh, you want that done and now this is really the third big wave of business transformation which is AI development so web development app development AI development um, where you get effectively AI either through chat 
or through phone calls or through ultimately uh, very soon streaming video, um, doing uh, functions that you would normally have a team of humans do, but it will do it 24 by seven any time of day with a higher level of quality of, and surprisingly a very much higher level of empathy because when, when people are, are doing support and they're answering the phone all day, they get tired towards the end of the day, et cetera. The AI never gets tired, it's got infinite empathy and, can, and will be happily speaking to you for as long as you want to speak to them on the phone. So um, the budget for this is quite simple. The same price it roughly costs you to get a website or an app is the same price it now costs you to get an app. Now, as I said before, that means different things for different size customers. But really, from a few thousand dollars upwards, you can get AI doing certain things. And I can give you a bit of a demo of how easy it is. And who will it be calling? So um, obviously, it's going to be running off a, a database Thanks. of prospects. So, um, uh, so which company is the AI calling? Uh, in terms of targets? Um... We'll say freelancer, I guess. Yeah. Okay, freelancer. And I'll say uh, it'll be calling me, Matt Barry. Okay. Okay. Let's do a demo. So this is very rough and ready. I've obviously only sat down for a couple of minutes here and done this. So it won't be 100%, but it will give you an idea. Now, how do I get this on? Do I just hold up here? Is that what I do? Okay. Yeah, the order comes through. Okay, so we're now about to do a demo. Hi. It's Dan Risdale here, head of research at Edison Investment Research. Hope you're having a good day so far. I'm reaching out because we work with over 400 listed businesses globally, helping them boost their visibility with investors through high impact research and digital targeting. I'd love to set up a quick 15 minute call to learn about your priorities at Freelancer and share some insights on how we can help you reach new investors and global markets. What does your schedule look like this week for a quick chat, maybe tomorrow or later in the week? Do you cover ASX listed companies? Absolutely, Matt. We work with a wide range of ASX listed companies from early stage growth stories to established names. Our team's got deep experience in the Australian market and we're really focused on helping businesses like freelancers stand out to both local and global investors. So would you have a window, say, tomorrow afternoon or later this week for a quick 15-minute call? I can work around whatever suits you best. And so which markets would I better reach investors in? Would you better get me to the U.S. and in front of a bunch of U.S. investors that could um, invest in my company? Great question, Matt. Hey, yes, that's exactly what we do. We've got strong reach into the U.S. and Europe as well as Asia, so we can help get freelancer in front of a much broader pool of institutional and retail investors well beyond just Australia. Our research and digital targeting are designed to put your story in front of the right people wherever they are. U.S. investors are always looking for compelling ASX opportunities, and we know how to get their attention. How about we lock in a quick call to dive into your goals and see how we can tailor our approach for you? What's your availability like tomorrow or Wednesday? Um, how late could you do Wednesday? I can do as late as 5 p.m. Sydney time on Wednesday, Matt. Would 4.30 p.m. or 5 p.m. work for you? If you prefer a different time, just let me know what suits you best. Oh, I could probably do 4.30. Perfect. Let's lock in 4.30 p.m. this Wednesday. I'll send a calendar invite to make it easy. On the call, we'll chat about your current investor outreach, your goals for Freelancer, and I'll share some examples of how we've helped other ASX-listed companies expand their investor base, especially in the U.S. Sound good? And is there anyone else from your team you'd like to join the call? Um, I think Brent would like to join. Is that okay if he, if he hops on? Absolutely, Matt. Brent's more than welcome to join. The more, the merrier. I'll make sure the invite goes out to both of you. So just to recap, we're set for 4.30 p.m. this Wednesday, and we'll focus on how Edison can help freelancer reach new investors, especially in the U.S. After our chat, we'll outline some next steps tailored to your goals. Thanks for your time, Matt. I'm genuinely excited to see what we can achieve together. Thank you. That's so, very good. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> So obviously that only took me a few uh, seconds to um, whip together. Uh, so you can see there that uh, you know a lot comes down to kind of you know feeding in the prompts and kind of you know the the, the sort of information you want to uh, the the workflow that you want to perform. But I just basically cut and pasted a bunch of things from your website, put in a link, and uh, typed in your email address, and off you go. That's actually very good for somebody who's looking to deploy a, a, an agent on their own for their own business. How how would you start? 
just go to freelance.com slash AI. We've got demos uh, available on the site. You can give it a go. Uh, or just go post a project. It's free to do so. Uh, very simple to type in the description. We have AI personalizing and helping you uh, fill in your uh, project description. So even if you've got a few bullet points, we can we can uh, you know develop a brief from that and hit post. And within a few seconds, you'll have freelancers around the world uh, wanting to help you. And if you want even more help, you can click the, up, the recruiter upgrade. And one of my team is a human. will reach out and give you a call and uh, talk through what your requirements are. Perfect. I can certainly think of a few uh, projects in our business that we could, we could use you for. Matt, many thanks for, for having me today. Wonderful. Yeah.